The Philippines uh, has already begun its nationwide rollout of COVID-19 vaccination among minors aged 12 to 17 as of November 3. The Philippine drug regulators have granted emergency use authorization both for Pfizer and Moderna vaccines for minors as young as 12 in June and September of this year, respectively. The COVID-19 vaccination of minors is indeed a welcome development for parents, students, and of course, teachers, as this could be a possible game changer for schools to officially open. So the question we have is, what are the vaccines that have been proven to be safe? Or are they safe? And if not, what are some of the expected side effects of COVID-19 vaccine that our children may suffer? Please watch this. We know that children can also get COVID-19 Anyone who has COVID-19 is going to develop most likely what we call as a long COVID syndrome or a post-COVID-19 condition. Research suggests that children with both mild and severe COVID-19 do experience long-term symptoms. And the most common symptoms in children include tiredness or fatigue, headache, trouble sleeping, trouble concentrating, and of course, muscle and joint pains on cough. Now, the problem is these symptoms associated with post-COVID syndrome could affect your child's ability to attend school, do his or her usual activities. It is for this reason, therefore, that it is strongly advised that children should also get COVID-19 vaccines as a way to protect these kids from getting COVID-19 infection. Now, if you look closely at the country where COVID-19 vaccination for children has already started and the country with more data with regard to COVID-19 vaccines on children is in the United States. The COVID-19 vaccines that have been approved for kids in the U.S. based on age group is between age 5 to 11. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has already given emergency use authorization for Pfizer vaccine. This involves two injections, but they're given three weeks apart. It contains a lower dose than the usual adult dose of Pfizer. In fact, it has been shown that giving these kids at as little as 10 microgram dose compared to the 30 microgram dose of adults have been shown to be very effective in eliciting a good immune response in this age group. In fact, it was shown that this vaccine for this age group can give our kids 91% effectivity in terms of preventing COVID-19 infection. Now, for children aged 12 to 15, the FDA also has given emergency use authorization to Pfizer that contains the same dose as the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for people above the age of 16. In this case, the second dose, again, can be given approximately six weeks after the first dose. And research have shown that for this age group, this Pfizer biotech vaccine was proven to be 100% effective in terms of preventing COVID-19 for children ages 12 to 15. Now for ages 16 and older, Pfizer BioNTech again was being approved. Again, it involves two injections. It was shown to be 91% effective in preventing severe illness with COVID-19 in this age group. Earlier research suggests that this vaccine is 96% at preventing severe disease with COVID-19 caused by Delta variant. So clearly, if you can see that the two dose Pfizer Biotech vaccine for emergency use in children is so far the only COVID-19 vaccine cleared for kids in the United States.
The commonly reported side effects of this vaccine once given to children included arm pain, fatigue, headache, muscle aches, joint pain, chills, fever, and nausea. However, the most common side effects usually went away within a couple of days. Now, in our country, in the Philippines, the Philippine Health Authority has granted both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines an emergency use authorization in our country. However, if you look closely at data, there are so far differing opinions in different countries regarding the use of Moderna vaccine for children. Again, the benefits of Moderna vaccine have been proven to be more or outweigh the risk. There are certain countries like, for example, France, where in the French Public Health Authority recommends that people under 30 should only be given Pfizer when available instead of Moderna, because apparently in their own outcome data, Moderna carried comparatively higher risk of heart-related problems. Their study actually showed that within the same population aged under 30, the risk of heart problem was around five times lesser with Pfizer compared to Moderna's job. Now, the French data came soon after Canada also notified that they also had higher risk of myocarditis data with Moderna vaccine. It is for this reason, likewise, that in the United States, the FDA apparently continues to only allow Pfizer vaccine for children and that they still need more time to complete their assessment of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for the 12 to 17-year-old group before they will grant emergency use authorization for Moderna for this age group. And this review may not be completed until after January 2022. So what are these side effects that we're talking about in children? What are these heart-related events? Now, we always have to remember that we're talking about myocarditis, but let's put this into context, that the risk of heart inflammation from getting COVID is the bigger threat. If you get COVID-19 infection, the risk of myocarditis is so significant that any risk of getting it or myocarditis from a COVID-19 vaccine is considered very small. In, this, in the U.S., for example, there has been an increase in the reported cases of myocarditis after mRNA COVID-19 vaccination, and what they found out they were particularly present in the age group among males aged between 12 and 17. One study that suggests that the risk of myocarditis in the week after being fully vaccinated with Pfizer was about 54 cases per million doses given among males between ages 12 to 17. And of these cases, the problem happened more often after the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and typically within several days after COVID-19 vaccination. But the good news is most of these patients who suffered from myocarditis, who received care quickly, felt better after receiving medicine and, of course, bed rest. Now, the symptoms that our parents have to watch among their kids who are given Pfizer or Moderna includes chest pain, shortness of breath, feelings of having fast beating, fluttering, or pounding of the heart. So if your kid will complain of these symptoms within a week of getting the COVID-19 vaccine, please seek medical care. Now, a lot of us have been given Sinovac. We know that we have felt good after Sinovac with very minimal symptoms. So most parents also are questioning, how about Sinovac for our children? Now, China in June, for example, has already approved two vaccines, the Sinopharm and the Sinovac for children aged 3 to 17. But it has only been so far vaccinating children about 12 and above. Now, what happens after these two vaccines receive domestic approval for children in China, foreign governments began giving the shots to children in their own countries. Cambodia, for example, has already approved the use of Sinovac and Sinopharm shots in children 6 to 11. 
regulators. Likewise, in Chile, has approved Sinovac for children as young as six. And in Argentina, regulators have already approved Sinopharm vaccine for children as young as age three. Furthermore, Indonesia has recently approved Sinovac Biotech COVID-19 vaccine for children 6 to 11 based on its report from the Food and Drug Agency in the recent weeks. Furthermore, the United Arab Emirates since August have also rolled out Sinopharm vaccine to children age 3 to 17 and likewise Pfizer for age 5 to 11 for emergency use. Clearly, therefore, it is about time for us to implement vaccination among all children because they themselves are also at increased risk of getting COVID-19 infection. It is best that we also avoid these children from getting the so-called long COVID syndrome. Our vaccination program in our country has already started. Please support the government. Also, please report for any side effects our children may get. Rest assured that all these vaccines are safe. And if one or two cases of myocarditis do occur, most of these patients will actually recover with time. I hope this video helps specifically among parents who are still not sure whether to have their kids vaccinated with COVID-19 or not. With that, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.